Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Adventures, and today we're doing another Prehistoric Kingdom devlog recap. It's been a little bit of a while since we've done a couple of these, because there's been a lot of uh, preparing for that trailer, so it'd be, it's really awesome to get another nice devlog. This will be 32 for October of 2020, and we can see that really nice Torvus for us. We'll probably get back into that later, since it's Halloween. So, let's get into it. Welcome to October's development update. To all our new fans or those who have recently found the project, welcome. It's been a while since we've done one of these and we'll be recapping everything you might have missed in the months gone by. A handful of our developers also took part in live streams during August and September with Crytivo, so be sure to check out the archive if you're interested. So yeah, so there's a couple um, live streams and you can check out the trailer as well i can put these links in the description if you want to have a look or you can also check it out through here if you want to have a look so yeah let's get into it let's see what's changed today so let's see state of development the team as keen eyes fans may have noticed shadow raven studios has since been rebranded to brew meridian a new and official name for our development studio with a never expanding team and bigger aspirations we felt that a new coat of paint that's your ambitions. So we can see they've, we've got a new developer too. On the developer side, our team continues to grow with the addition of a new animator, Max. Some of you may already be familiar with his work found all over Twitter, and we couldn't be excited to keep the studio growing with fresh talent. So this is Max. I've mentioned him on a few videos before. He goes by Digital Duck. He does all those really, really nice uh, JWE mods. And he's working on that Feather mod, which should be coming out sooner or later. Almost, uh, at least part one. So yeah, I'm really excited to see him involved in this game because he's a really good animator, really good artist. He understands animal and dinosaur anatomy, so he's really, really good. And it's really, really awesome to see him involved. So we'll watch one of his first animations. We'll make sure it's top tier quality. I'm not sure. So let's go open up. So this is the Edmontosaurus locomotion. So let's have a looky loo. See, he's walking along, just chilling. Quite a nice animation. Look at that running. I like that little hop that he does. He's got to get himself up to speed. Let's, let's watch that again. You can see this one's the chill animation. Man, I like this Anectins very much. I think it was awesome. I really like this run here. Look, he kind of does like a little hop. Put himself up and runs. I like that. That's awesome. That is so very awesome. Okay, so now let's have a look at the development report. Okay, so the art and audio members have been had their hands for all these past few months creating new buildings, the wetland biome, animal animation, sounds, and music for the game. You saw and heard the fruits of their labor in our latest trailer, showcasing the passion our team is putting to the project. Of course, got to show that passion. The programmers aren't messing around either. Fences, paths, animal AI, modular building, and water rendering continue to receive further work while power management started development in the background. In terms of optimization, a flexible voice management system for audio was developed and integrated to each to ensure that the sounds game sounds great and performs well in dense scenes. So that's going to be interesting to see because sometimes when you have lots of people around with dinosaurs and I imagine sometimes it can get quite loud. So you got to get something to sort that out. So we can see the progress, many exhibits, micromanagement. River, so that's what I've been working on. Fences, UI, all that good stuff. Environments, all that good stuff. Yeah. So we got development highlights. So an assortment of recolorable lights for mod development. Assortment of recolorable lights have been used to make your park more interesting at night in this spooky Halloween environment. Creative colors, use of colors used to change the mood of an area of interest. So you can see here, we've got some spooky, scary skeletons. I love this. You can see the Torvosaurus here having a nice lick at the pumpkin. Works perfectly for uh, Halloween. This would be a perfect thumbnail too. So we can see all these wonderful plants in the background there and the people. 
I like all these uh, rocks as well and the plants. It just feels like a full enclosure. It's very, very hard for games to get like a full forest, but I can really feel like Prehistoric Kingdom's really nailing it, and it looks amazing. I just love that Torbosaurus. I think it's a very underrated dinosaur. And we can see these, uh, I believe they're solar things around there too. It looks awesome. And you can see the T-Rex cafe in the restroom. Really looks amazing. And we can also see the lights here. You can see that light creating that reddish spooky mood around here. And they'll be recolorable. You can see the green one as well and the white ones. So it's a really good mix of colors that you can help create moods around your enclosures. So that's going to be really awesome. It's really cool that I can now click on this and show you in more detail. That's gonna, that's pretty cool. Though lamps and similar objects will only turn on at night by default, players can enable them an option that forces them to stay lit regardless of time, so that works well. Okay, so now we've got another modular building thing. Decorative plants. What's the point in building a zoo if you can't spend hours detailing the park with gardens? Am I right, fellas? Our team, our art team's got you covered with the addition of decorative tropical plants and world space mulch space, uh, s shapes. <laughs> got a bit of a tongue twister there. These fancy items can be scaled without issue of texture stretches, making them odd solution for all your flower bed needs. So be kind of similar to the uh, rocks that you can match and change them to fit exactly what you need. So that's really awesome. See, so look. You can see these 12 pieces here, half square, um, half circle, triangle, square, round. See, that all works out perfectly. And you can see the texture stays pretty much the same. There's no weird warping of the textures when you move around these items. So that's pretty awesome. I'm really excited to get stuck into that. You can get all the nitty gritty little details. And then we can see you made a little flower bed here. I love it. You can see these nice plants, beautiful flowers. Look really nice in a nice little garden. It will be very epic. So, unlike a regular flora, these vibrant plants are purely decorative, which means they won't contribute to an exhibit's foliage density. So you can put these in and make them look really nice and help probably fill up an enclosure a little bit without adding to the foliage density inside the enclosure, so it works well, I assume. You could put some nice flowers in there just to make it look nice and you won't be contributing to your animal's uh, foliage density needs. So that's going to be a really cool way to make beautiful enclosures. And then now we've got the wetland biome. So the wetland biome is home to many amazing creatures. Though there's a few more trees to create before it's done. Plants like this Amazonian giant lilies, small lily pads, mangroves, reeds, and cypress already make an exhibit feel adequately swampy, appropriately swampy. So click an image below to see the full size preview. So we can see, look at that. And that looks wonderful. I like that. Looks like a bayou in the middle of uh, Florida or something. I really love this. Or even like um, Saurian, you can see like when you go into the swamps there, it has that kind of vibe. We just love how full it feels. It really just feels like it's a full forest. It's just something that PK has just managed to nail perfectly. We can see this one. We can see these giant lilies. I love that. I think they fit well in a lot of enclosures. That looks awesome. I love it. And then we can have a look at this other one. The Spectre. This is kind of similar to the one with the Dinochirus. We saw it walking through. I just got to say that looks amazing, man. It looks amazing. It looks great. It looks wonderful. So once this biome is complete, a final overview image will be available in a later devlog. So this was kind of just a new biome they wanted to add. I think it was definitely worth the while of putting in because they really add something distinct from the other biomes. Because they kind of moved from the temperature thing, they moved from that into kind of doing more biomes. That's the kind of thing with development. Sometimes things change as uh, opinions change, and that's only that's only going to get better, because you can tell if you compare PK now to PK even a year or two ago, it's just shot le le uh, leaps and bounds above anything, really. So we're really going to be seeing something good. So sometimes changes for the better. So updated terrain blending. So all biomes were updated to make enhanced use of height-based texture blending to better mix and match various ground types in a realistic fashion. You can see all these different ones here. We can see it looks blended nicely. It looks very realistic. I like the rocks here. That looks really nice. So... Stacking textures on top of each other at a low intensity can create some very unique and interesting combinations as seen above, so that looks really nice. It looks realistic as heck. Okay, so now we've got a structure showcase. 
Get to know the buildings of Prehistoric Kingdom with structure showcases, traditionally featuring one building per month. These spotlights will give a quick look at new architecture from multiple angles. It's be kind of similar to the species uh, highlights and spotlights, but or showcases. So this will be more about the buildings. So this is going to be cool to see a little bit more from the game. So first up, we've got the industrial power station. This key utility provides power to the park by contributing to the local grid, allowing, allowing guest facilities, infrastructure, and electrified fences to keep the lights on. Now that is cool. I really like the shape of that. Quite realistic. And you can hide it out in a little corner somewhere. Make sure you get your, your park has power and make sure your dinosaurs don't go running about. And now we've got mini exhibits. Everyone's favorite little update. I was really happy when this came out. So now we've got mini exhibits. So designed to meet the optimal needs for its specialized inhabitants, mini exhibits bring a selection of tiny animals to the park. Beginning with the Microraptor, players are able to customize the environmental preset, temperature, lighting, and material of its home, including the brand new aviary. So let's have a look at there. Please don't feed the animals, okay? Don't let the don't let the little guys get sick. We can see all these cool little angles. We can see the door here. We can see this chain link. Looks wonderful. I really like the inside of this. And we can see the Microraptors chilling around happily. So we can see him. Look at that, what a cutie. Tell me that is not a cutie. P2, I would very aggressively disagree with you. He's just adorable. <laughs> I love him. I love him to bits. So we can see we've got this really, really nice aviary. Really cool to see what they add in the future. There's really a whole, whole mix of animals that would fit perfectly in these aviaries. And you could add different biomes, different... Uh, Levels you can have like some that are more aquatic. There's really a huge variation that you could go with these mini exhibits, and they could really go places and really add a lot of diversity to the park by even just existing. Just because there's a lot of variation between the sizes between a Microraptor and an Argentinosaurus, so it kind of really brings that range. Because a lot of zoo animals, a lot of zoos mainly have small animals. It's really the only occasional lion, elephant, things like that. You can use, most of the animals are quite small, just because most animals are quite small. So it really creates that really interesting balance. So you can have lots of small animals and lots of big ones too. And just you can't complain about more animals, can you? I I can't. <laughs> you can never have too many animals. Okay, so news roundup. So it's been a long time coming, but we've finally revealed our release window and early access announcement trailer to the world, arriving Q2 2021. Get ready to build, manage, and grow your ultimate zoo for extinct animals and three historic kingdoms. You see, nice Torvosaurus. Thanks to our fantastic publisher, Crytivo, we were given an opportunity with IGN as part of an exclusive first look. We couldn't have asked for a better reception and are deeply humbled by the support we've been shown. Yeah, that was incredible. Like, we got. I think it was 100k in the first couple of days and that was awesome it's really awesome to get this game like this on a platform that's because ign is probably the biggest gaming platform on the planet at least on the internet so it's really awesome to get that sort of platform for pk and get it out to as many people as possible and see what they like i just think that's incredible so we know everyone's hungry for more time frames so please announce the alpha will be available early next year to our eligible Kickstarter backers and Crytivo pre-purchases. So if you've got your alpha, you should be able to get it about early next year. So that'll be awesome. Over the next few months, we'll be discussing exactly what to expect and when to expect it as we get closer to release. So the alpha shouldn't be anything too big. Uh, it's just kind of just get it out there, kind of test it out, test the water, so to speak. So it shouldn't be too big. So I wouldn't worry about it. But it's going to be awesome to finally get your hands on it. So working with Nigel Marvin. So for years, our fans have wished for a very specific person to be part of Prehistoric Kingdom, and now that's becoming a reality. We are incredibly honored to have British wildlife television presenter Nigel Marvin lend his voice to our latest trailer. The reaction from the community has highlighted just how special this opportunity was, and we can't thank Nigel and his team enough for working with us. It's a relationship we hope to continue growing, and it might have and this mightn't be the last you hear from this beloved time traveler, uh, park supervisor. <laughs> so that's awesome because Nigel's just energy just pick, fits the game perfectly. I think that energy of him with that calm, 
uh, enthusiastic voice. So I think that kind of just fit the fit prehistoric kingdoms aesthetic perfectly. So it was just a match made in heaven. And that was really awesome to get him involved. And if he ever watches this video or watches any of my videos or I get to talk to him, I just want to say thank you, obviously, for being involved in something like this room and just being involved in wildlife in general because we all know that we need more people involved in teaching wildlife and protecting wildlife and because that's just one of the most important things you can do in this world honestly so yeah we got a stream recap early access launch roster to begin players will be able to breed and play with a selection of about 22 adult species Found in our brand new website, including the fabulous Dinochirus, Nasutoceratops, and Microraptor. So we can see there we've got 22 animals at launch. Uh, quality over quantity. Improve the behaviors before adding new creatures. So that'll be cool. So we'll just get a nice little selection and then we'll start adding creatures. See Nasutoceratops and Dinochirus. I really like the feathers on the Dinochirus. And the Nasutoceratops are great. We've got a mini exhibit as well. So we can see a bit of a Microraptor and Animation and sound, a smaller roster allows us to put fidelity in shorter animals to look and sound alive. So that's obviously the best way to go. I'd rather have a few animals than a lot. If they're harder if they have a few really, really good animals rather than heaps of kind of eh animals. So that kind of just have happening over time. Refocusing the initial release roster was a choice made earlier in the year to find a consistent basis of quality and ensure that we're not stretching ourselves too thin when any new behaviors and features like ontogeny via updates. The team wanted to give a good summary of what to expect during our time in early access, so keep in mind that a small number of animals shown in the trailer may be reworked or swapped come Q2 2021. We have a, family, a fantastic catalog of fan favorite creatures to work with. So rest assured that more species will be added back into the game over time. So they already added a lot of the models. They're just kind of um, going to add them in over time as they feel like it. I imagine you could kind of have updates when you add a couple of animals. I think they'd be a great way to keep investment over, keep people playing over early access. So that'd be awesome. So we got early access launch features. So this is what we'll have. So apart from animals, players will be engaging in creative tools, management features, and progression loops during the time of Prehistoric Kingdom. So this is launch key features. So the animals, this is for early access, 22 adult species, mini aviary and basic AI, creativity, fences and paths, about 150 modular plus modular pieces, terraforming and a couple maps. Management, you get keepers, animal and guest welfare, guests and facilities resources, and progression, you'll be getting excavations and research so that'll be some changes there so you kind of so there's feedback loops of trying to also um get your animals kind of similar to uh, um oh well it's kind of changed i'm not going to try and say anything about that i think it's i'll keep it i'll keep it secret for a bit so Designs of management and progression uh, mechanics have been locked down with implementation already started at a few core components like power management. One of these new features have spent enough time on the oven that we'll do a showcase of it. We'll be sure to do a showcase of it in the future devlog. Awesome. So future content. During our time in early access, we'll be looking to building our foundations, adding new content such as breeding, growth, expanded behaviors, and more. So we can have a look at these planned behaviors. So you can see breeding and growth is going to be a big thing, including ontogeny. If you remember from the demo, that had a really cool ontogeny system as you'd watch them grow. So it'll be something like that. New hunting behaviors, fleeing, fighting, all sorts of new behaviors. Really just expand on them. That's going to be awesome. Expanded mechanics, weather, disease, more challenging breakouts. So that'll be important. You've got to make sure that your animals are contained, healthy, and safe from the weather and so you get to expanded management so there'd be more considerations and more staff probably not ranges but other types of staff like janitors or security or whatever uh, expanded roster so be lots of new creatures coming in and obviously a lot more than that so don't you worry your heads about the content so that's going to be really awesome i'm really excited to get into early access i'll definitely be playing it on the channel so don't you worry about it and now we're going to be getting to the community spotlights so now this is awesome this is by dino dan 
from the Discord, and I'm just in awe of this. I really like how we managed to get all the animals in. So there is something missing from our worlds. The amazing animals that time has left behind. What if we could bring them back? What if extinction didn't have to be forever? And we could see all the wonderful animals of Prehistoric Kingdom, ranging from Argentinosaurus there, and Brachiosaurus just looking above everyone, from little Microraptor sitting on that Parasaurolophus. Uh, and you can see Nigel Marvin patting it, giving it some love. That's adorable. See, so yeah, this is so awesome. Dino Dan really did outdid himself with this one. And let's see what other ones we have here. This one's nice. This is by RT2. We can see um, this is Nigel with his uh, digger, his burrowing owl, and also a couple of microraptors. Sounds like something he'd really enjoy doing. I think that looks really awesome. Did a good job there, RT. And then we've got Nawala. Look at that cute little um, crowny for Halloween. Got a little uh, basket for... I don't really celebrate Halloween, but I guess he's got a little basket for his uh, treats. He's going to wear it, and she's wearing a little um, ghost thing. It looks adorable. Very, very cute. Love Crowny. And this one, this is a, I believe it's a Janky Latin, and created by Parrot Alex. And you can see the Crowny logo and the jet and the pumpkin. That looks awesome. So, yeah. Thank you for reading October's devlog. With the release window out in the wild, we want our monthly updates to be focused and digestible. Going forward, all devlogs will be a format similar to this one, showing off development highlights and recapping edge tidbits released during the month. We sincerely hope everyone's excited and we can't wait until next time to PK team. So yeah, that's awesome. So that's a really good recap of kind of what happened during the past couple of months and some extra things that have been work been worked on. So that gives a really good clear plan of what's been going on through uh, early access that's planned for Q2 2020, uh, 2021. So that gives a really good plan and some extra things and like that. So if you kind of want an update of just generally what's the plan for the next year or so, this is kind of it. So yeah, I really, really liked reading this devlog. It was cool to see that Digital Duck or Max is involved in... Uh, PK now, he's kind of like one of my favorite uh, artists, especially because of his PK mods. He's like makes probably the best ones in my opinion. And I'm really excited for him to get those feather mods out if he manages to get enough time since he's uh, working for PK and those wonderful animations. Really, really wish him the best of luck. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And remember, if you want to get make sure that you get every uh, a notification for every video I put out you need to click that little bell make sure that you're keeping up posted I haven't been posting too much lately because I've been busy but I'm really excited to get back into it and it was a good rest so really hope you guys enjoy this video hope you guys like and subscribe and bye bye